Assalamu alaikum guys and we are back with another episode of the Jahiliya Diaries and uh, before we get started into the actual Jahiliya Diary itself I just want to say a huge jazakallah for all the love and support the likes and comments and the subs guys it means the world to me if you guys have any suggestions for the next story make sure that you drop it in the comments below I respond to all the comments so if you'd like to drop some feedback you can easily drop it in the comment section below and you will receive a message from me or perhaps you could just DM me at way of life SQ and inshallah I will respond to you over there as well if you want to talk about something more privately. The goal behind the Jahiliya Diaries for those of you who are new to this channel is a series designed for you to learn from my mistakes. If you could learn from my errors that I've made and I could save you years of sorrow and perhaps going down that wrong path, that's a win for me. So if you could learn from my losses and win yourself, that's essentially what I want you guys to do. And I want you to learn from all the mistakes and errors that I've made so that you guys can become better people and I could save you from those sort of sorrows. Today's Jahiliya Diary is about something that's extremely important to me. It was life changing in my life and how it actually brought me to Islam, quote unquote. And there's not one instant that brought me to Islam. Rather, it was a series of things that's happened that helped me draw closest to Allah. Today's Jahadiyya Diary is about me meeting the love of my life. Full disclaimer, this love of my life at the time is not my current wife right now. So prior to actually me even meeting her, I was dating around. I was dating girls and in these haram relationships and just being super promiscuous because I believe that I I needed to just go around and just sample everything and I just viewed women as like this buffet of just things and I just had to sample every single thing and every different type of woman out there so I could have more experience and the interesting thing about this guys is that a lot of times men want to have multiple experiences underneath their belt so that they can either brag about it or have that be their claim to fame. I've been such and such with how many women or I've been with so many women before to get a chance to brag to the friends about these things. Have all these experiences in the that not the average person's able to have. So at this time, I was dating multiple women and uh, sometimes at the same time. I was just going around, living my life, doing whatever I wanted to do. No fear of Allah, no consciousness of Allah. I could care less about Allah. I just didn't care. I just wanted to do whatever I wanted to do. But in my heart of hearts, I always wanted to meet that girl who was going to be special for me, someone I'd want to marry and I'd want to actually be with. So I think secretly, internally, I was always sampling with all these women so I could find the one that I actually want to be with but uh, that's another story so one day my friend Jonathan and I we decided to go to this bar and uh, nothing major it's just another Friday evening another Saturday evening and where me and him want to go to this bar me and Jonathan are over there we kicking it we're chilling we're you know talking to all these girls and the drinks are on the table and we're just looking like true successful people you know what I mean like we're young men over here in a bar we have drinks on our tables we have women at our tables and we're living life we're doing exactly what we wanted to do and the next thing you know, Jonathan ends up seeing someone and spotting someone that he knows from his university. So he goes up to her, super excited to see her over here, and then he introduces her to me. And the moment I saw this girl, I'm thinking in my head, I have to have her. Now, the interesting thing about this guy, when you're down this path of dating, you start objectifying women a lot. It's not really about the person's insides and the personality and their heart and how they are as people. Though those things are important, and I do believe that people actually do look for those features, that's not the first thing that someone's looking for. First thing that someone's looking for is probably their or how big their chest is or how pretty their face is and all these other qualities that are super shallow and superficial but those are the qualities that we are looking for at the first glance and when we see a woman and we're trying to date them. I remember he introduced me to this girl and I don't know what it was about her but I was absolutely smitten by her the very first time. I was all over her like I wanted to be with this girl so bad just because like there was something about her. Her beauty obviously was something very attractive. For the first time in a long time I actually seen something like she had a really cool personality and she was really funny and all these other things that were really attractive to me her sense of style was really nice and it just sort of vibed with me and I remember being around this girl and we were just having fun we were laughing and everything like that that was it right we just had a fun time we were dancing and all that sort of stuff and the night was over I go home and the first thing I do is I try to find her via Facebook and I message her we start talking and you know we're having a good time we're just pretty much pick up where we left off from the bar to Facebook and now we're having such a good time that we decide 
said that, hey, you know, you want to meet up, want to go grab some drinks, because that's the thing to do, right? When you're an adult and you want to be social with people, the first thing you ask someone is, you want to grab a drink tonight? That's a social status. That's something that you want to do so that you could vibe with people and it allows you to be more social with people. And plus, the alcohol gives you a little bit more courage and confidence because it allows you to be a little more loosened up and not so uptight about everything that's going on. So we meet up and you know what? We pick up exactly where we left off from the night. I'm talking about like we're vibing, you know? It's just vibes, we're laughing. It, it's just it's just beautiful. Everything about it, it's absolutely beautiful. And we talk some more and we meet up some more and she tells me something. Hey, I just want you to know that I have a boyfriend. Now, I'll be honest with you. When I heard her say that the first time, it didn't even bother me. Let me tell you why it didn't bother me. In the past, I've been with girls who had boyfriends and they've left their boyfriends to be with me. I've messed with girls who've had boyfriends. Nothing came out of it, but I didn't care because they were with a boyfriend. I could care less. It was like less drama for me. They do all the hard work and they do all that boyfriend stuff and I just have fun with the girls. It was an absolutely great transaction to have. I'm thinking that this girl, I want to be with this girl. Now the difference between her and them was I didn't actually want to be with them. Those girls, I actually did not even want to be with. I was just trying to have fun with them and trying to move on. But this girl, I actually wanted to see a future with. I actually wanted to be with this person. So when she told me that, I'm telling her, listen, I could care less because I believe that I was the best thing since sliced bread. Me and her, we start dating and she still has a boyfriend at this time. You know, we'd be out together and he would text her, he would message her and she would just lie and say, oh, I'm with my friend this, oh, I'm with that friend or we're at the movies or this and that. But he doesn't know that she's actually with another dude. I just want to pause right here for a second because at this time, I'm not thinking about this, but what happens if she's actually with me? Like me and her are actually dating and she ends up doing this to me. What this exposed was her quality as a person, that she is willing to lie and manipulate to get whatever she wants. Literally, that was her quality, willing to lie and manipulate to get whatever it is that she wants. And I'm not thinking that far. I'm so smitten and I'm so in love that I'm not thinking that what if she does break up with him and me and her are actually together? What happens when I'm texting her and I'm like, hey, where you at? And she's telling me she's there. In the back of my mind, I'll be thinking, yeah, but when she was with me, she told him that. What if she is telling me that right now she's with another dude? This could lead to tons of insecurities. There's tons of relationships out there, guys, that have been ruined because of insecurities and these trust factors between couples that they don't trust each other going out or whatever because they feel like they're gonna be cheated on or they are cheating on them or whatever that might be. Some time passes on and me and her are just getting closer and closer. And like I'm all over her and she's all over me and we are actually about each other we really really care about each other and I come to this point now where I'm thinking when are you gonna break up with him because me and her are talking about this and she's just like yeah I'm gonna leave him soon he's not good to me he's this he's that and now I'm just wondering like when are you gonna leave him when is that moment actually gonna happen she keeps telling me that's gonna happen soon I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it it's gonna happen soon where I'm, I'm going to leave him you know next week or whatever the case might be but that next week never comes I'm so head over heels for her that I cannot stand and bear the fact that she is still with him while she's still with me. And I don't know if you've ever experienced this. For those of you who are in haram relationships, may Allah bless you and guide you. Those of you who've been through what I've been through where there's some type of relationship issue and there's some friction happening, may Allah bless you. Wallahi, this sort of stuff traumatizes you. It scars you. The amount of insecurity and the amount of trust issues I had after this girl were ridiculous. I always worried about trusting other women after her, but if it wasn't for this person, if it wasn't for this human being, I wouldn't be where I am right now. I would say this person was the turning point in my life. Without this person, I would not have been able to discover and explore until I found Islam. I would never have if it wasn't for her. So Alhamdulillah for this event even happening in my life. And I'm thinking to myself, how can I be with you? I can't be with you anymore. I feel like wrong and part of me felt like maybe if I broke up with her, that'd make her want to leave him more and come with me. But that's not what happened. I, I, I remember meeting up with her one day and I said that I can't be with you anymore. I, I just can't. I can't do this anymore with you. Uh, you need to figure out this and you need to sort it out with him, but I got you know, look out for myself. I thought this would happen next. Oh no, please don't leave me. I can't live without you. I want to be with you. No, I, I promise I'm going to leave him. Please don't leave me. Don't leave 
kidding me? But that's not what happened. She agreed to it. And in fact, I would Facebook stalk her all the time and I would see that she's having the time of her life with him. That burned me. The fact that I can see someone happy while I'm miserable burned me. I couldn't stand the fact that she was happy while I was unhappy. I did not like that at all. So after breaking up with her, I went back to doing what I know best. Back to those girls, back to those parties, back to those bars, right? Meeting all those people that I was doing already. Like I was already doing those things. So I thought that it'd be best if I left her and I went back to my old lifestyle. But let me tell you something. I didn't realize how incomplete I was as a person until I was with her. Because at that time, I felt like she completed me. I felt whole. When I broke up with her, it reminded me of how empty I always been. It reminded me of how I've never been happy. I've never been complete. And it wasn't until I was with her that I figured that out that I've never been happy and I was incomplete. So I kept on doing things to find that completion. I went back to the smoking. I went back to the drinking. I went back to the girls because before that used to complete me. I didn't know I was incomplete the whole time. I didn't know I was missing something the whole time. I went back to all those things in that lifestyle that gave me completion to only find out that when I'd be driving home, I'd be crying and all alone. I'd literally have to park on the side of the road and cry because I felt so alone. But on the outside looking in, I looked like I was having the time of my life. I was living this life. I looked like I was the man. All these girls around me, I was drinking, smoking, everything. People thought that I was the man. Things are great with me. I had money in my pocket. It was great. But that same person driving home alone would pull on the side of the highway, the freeway, the motorway. I would just break down and cry because I was so alone and incomplete. I realized now I was always lying to myself. I was always incomplete. I just never knew it. I never gave myself a chance to realize how lonely and incomplete I was because I was masking all my insecurities and incompleteness with stuff and things and events. So I don't think and realize how lonely and incomplete I was because the truth was I was lonely and incomplete because I didn't have a relationship with Allah. That's what I was missing the whole time. And I didn't realize this until I found that relationship with Allah. I had made relationships with marijuana, with alcohol, with parties, with girls. That was the relationship that I thought I was missing. That's what gave me completion. But the truth was that I was missing my relationship with Allah. And I'm here to tell you right now that if you don't have a relationship with Allah, you are incomplete. You are absolutely incomplete because you don't have a relationship with Allah. And that's the true relationship that you're missing. Everything else is a lie. Every other thing that you're doing to make yourself feel better about yourself is a lie. Because until you establish a relationship with Allah, you don't really know who you are. You are fully incomplete. You are fully incomplete because you don't have a relationship with Allah. And it took me worst possible way to figure that out. And I just don't want you to be sitting in your bathtub contemplating about killing yourself, crying for you to figure out that what you're truly missing is a relationship and connection with Allah. That's what I want to save you from. I want to save you from that. You don't have to go through all these traumas to realize one simple fact that you're missing a connection with Allah. So this was the Jahiliya Diary. Let me know in the comments below if you want a part two. Part two includes me seeing that girl one more time and telling you what happened after that. I appreciate you. Jazakallah khair for listening. I love you all for the sake of Allah. Make sure you hit this video with a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to this channel as well too. And do let me know if you do want a part two in the comments below. Make sure that you follow me on Instagram, Way of Life SQ. I love you all for the sake of Allah. Thank you so much once again. Wassalamu alaikum.